Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making trees. The trees I'm making are for the fantasy castle on the floating island, but I'll start completely afresh in case you want to make a tree for something else. This video is sponsored by Sketchfab, which is a great place to buy and sell and view 3D models online. I've used it for a few years now to sell models and what's really fantastic is that you can view the faces and topology of the model before you buy so you know exactly what you're getting. You can create an excellent portfolio on there so you can show off your work to its fullest. Links in the description. At the end of this tutorial series I will be placing the objects on Sketchfab and show you how you can do that. So here's some trees I've made using this technique and I'm going to show you this one in particular which I think is probably the best. So I'm in a new scene and I'll take the default cube and I will go into edit mode with tab on my keyboard and I'll press M. I'm using 2.83, if you're using 2.82 then it's Alt M and I will merge them at the center. That gives us one vertex. In order to move this you need to be in vertex mode up here and now I can press G and move it around. I'll right click to cancel that, E to extrude and make a tree shape. Make sure you're moving around when you're doing this and actually think about what a tree looks like. So they grow upwards, they don't really come downwards like this. So there's a really basic tree. If you want another point in the middle of maybe, let's say here, select two and right click subdivide. And then you can move that one around as well. Okay, so I'll go across to the modifiers, the spanner over here, or the wrench if you're American, add modifier and add the skin modifier. So it comes out a little bit strange. If we select all our vertices with A and press Control A, you can scale them down. So I'll start with something like that and then I'll select the bottom ones here and scale them up with Control A. And maybe the middle one here as well with Control A. So I go around just rescaling. You might want an extra point at the end. So if I press E to extrude and pull it down, then that will sort of flatten it out and I can scale it up. You might also want to add modifier, subdivision surface modifier, give it a bit more shape. And now go to the top ones, control A and scale them down. And you might want to start moving things around, rotating and just moving them into a nice position. I'm going to move these up slightly more and just edit the shape a bit more. You can of course go into X-ray mode here as well, which is probably a lot easier to be fair. Okay, so I've got a basic tree. You do have to watch out a little bit for these sort of anomalies in here. So sometimes you have to readjust some of your points so you don't get any overlapping geometry. Okay, so I've got a basic tree. The next thing to do is the leaves. You'll need an add-on for this. So edit, preferences, add-ons. If you type in image, there's the image as planes add-on. Make sure that's ticked and then close it down. Now we should be able to press Shift A, image, and there should be image as planes just there. So I've got a tree branch texture that I've made for you. It's called tree branch green one, and I'll import that. You can't see anything at the moment because we need to be in Eevee to see what it looks like. So here's the texture. It's got different variations of green leaves for different types of branches. If we go to the UV editing panel here, you can see that the plane, the four vertices are across here. So we need to map these to one of these areas. If you're new to UVs, then do check out my video on understanding UV editing. Link in the description and card in the corner. So if I select all, scale it, and you should be able to see it changing over here, but I'll just move to EV again. And you can see wherever I move this, it moves my image on here. So if I surround this one on the top left here, it would be helpful to have a bit more geometry so we can curve this a bit. So I'll right click subdivide and let's see how many we want to go. I think to about there, so three subdivisions. I'll select the middle vertex and go to proportional edit, which is up here. G to grab in the X axis coming out towards me and just give it some curve like that. I'll also need to right click and shade smooth so it's not jaggedy and that looks great. Now I need to line it up a bit, so R then Y 90 or minus 90 and then Shift D to duplicate and rotate them and move them around so they overlap but they're sort of looking in different directions. So I've got a sort of tree branchy thing happening there. I'll select one and duplicate it, Shift D, 
select all and control J to join them together. And it's saying active object is not in the mesh. So I make sure one's active and then control J and I'll join. And then I can move these near the tree for now. If I take this one, I can go into edit mode and select all and move these to a different position. So maybe across to this one. This one's darker, so these leaves will go at the bottom of the tree. And then I can duplicate them again and start rotating them around so they're random. And select them all and control J to join. And then move this into position. You can go really fine if you want and have small details or make them nice and big. That's entirely up to you. So I'll duplicate these two now and just move them around the place. Smaller branches at the top, of course. And we might want the lighter one as well, so, but I join these together. So I'll select one of these, go into edit mode, L to select one of those, which isn't joined, and shift D to duplicate, move it off to the side, and then P to separate by selection. And now I can go into edit mode with this, select all, and move that down to the new one. So same again, shift D to duplicate and rotate it, shift D to duplicate, and rotate it around. If your object center is off, then right click, set origin, origin to geometry. I'll select these all, control J to join them together and move these ones to the top of my tree. So we've got a nice looking tree there. I'll give the base a color. We'll go across to the shading tab now. So with our actual alpha texture, this is what it looks like. The color's plugged into the color and it's got an alpha map that's plugged into the alpha. If I press N now, there's some options under the options menu and we can change the alpha blend to something like alpha clipped, which will process a lot faster and you can change the clip threshold just here. And you can go for a more sort of stylized look like this or you can go much thinner, but you'll need more branches. The alpha hashed is the default and that gives the best and cleanest look, but you need more of your leaves because it's more see-through. So I tend to go for the alpha clipped and just change this. It gives a nice stylized look. Lastly, with the base, it's got a very chunky look at the moment, so you'll probably want to apply your modifiers because you can't right click and shade smooth on this because it's based on the modifiers. So the best thing to do is apply both these. And if you want to reduce the topology, you can either add a decimate modifier and reduce the topology this way. Just look at your outline and see where it starts changing. So somewhere around there and then apply, or you can use the remesh in the sculpting tools. I'll apply that and then add a brown material to it. And I think a bit of roughness, right click shade smooth. And I've got one on top of the other. So I'll just delete the other one. So with a bit more duplicating and rotating, I've come up with this. You can just select a lot of branches. I'll just deselect the tree and shift D and then R to rotate with either individual origins, which I've got here, and it will rotate them individually, or with medium point R, rotate. And you can come up with a very sort of full looking tree. It does help to go in and just modify a few and add variation around the place. Also, you can go to the shading and in the color section, you can shift A, color, and look at the hue and saturation, plug that in there. And if you want to change the hue at all, you can go down or up for more green or more yellow, and you can get some really interesting looking trees. And there we go, a simple, fairly low poly tree that you can put into your scenes and put into your floating castle if you've made one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.